Here we have slightly different. We take a piece of germanium, we place it in 12.05 milliliters of chloroform and a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder. Chloroform level increases to 15.46 milliliters. What's the density of germanium? Very similar to the previous problem. We're going to use our intuition. Okay, we're going to take that mass that we see, we're going to divide it by a volume. But the problem is we've got three different volumes listed in here and that seems a little weird. So what are we going to do? Well, again, let's parse. Two sentences. First one ends in a period. It's a preamble. Second, in fact, three sentences, I've just realized. The second, uh, yeah, not, sorry about that. I actually managed to confuse myself a little bit. This happens. And that's when you say to yourself, let's go back and try again. A piece of germanium is placed in chloroform in a graduated cylinder. That's preamble. The chloroform level increases to 15.46. That's a statement. That's more preamble. Two different sentences. What is the density of germanium? Question word. What is the density? Okay, density. I know that's mass and volume. Again, we've got the mass given right there in the preamble. But we've got three different volumes. 12.05 milliliters of chloroform. In a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder, the chloroform level rises to 15.46 milliliters. That 25 milliliter graduated cylinder is just where this is happening. That volume means very little unless it wasn't able to hold all the chloroform as it was displaced by the germanium. So that's a bit of a red herring. That's again why we sometimes want to ignore numbers until we really need to figure out. If we think about the chloroform is what's undergoing a change, then that's a volume difference. That volume difference is going to be equivalent to the volume of the germanium. And now we've got the two pieces of information, mass and volume, to solve this particular problem.